Hey, what is going on everyone? My name is Sinra. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Smell Review. Where I watch anime and I give my thoughts and opinions on it. Now, there is a lot I want to talk about so far. Um, ReZero Season 2. Oh boy. It... This, this, this season really got to me, just like the first one did. Um, so before I go ahead and I'm going to go into explaining about uh, the anime, I want to I wanna talk a little bit before we go into this. So, um, I did say at the end of last video I'm going to be doing a something a little bit different um, with the channel. Or a little bit different when I make these videos. And what I'm doing is I am script free. So, um... My hope is that these feel like a little bit more genuine, a little bit more authentic, and more of like my thoughts and opinions more, instead of like a uh, review type things, because that's uh, that's not what I'm trying to go for. I want to I want to give my opinion, my thoughts, what I my takes on it, uh, on said anime. So I'm just um, ditching out the scripts, and I'm and I'm not gonna have to worry about them. I'm just gonna. Just give my go off my head. Use my thoughts and opinions on it. So, uh, I'm hoping that works. Um, today we are drinking that Propel. Uh, I gotta I gotta lean off a of soda, bro. Uh, grape flavor be boosting, bro. Re Zero Season Two. Let me get the mic a little close here. Okay. Where do I begin? Like. This show is so crazy and dramatic the way that they have to um, just play on it. So it literally just takes place straight after the events of season one. So uh, no, no even t uh, time skip or anything. So like no time skip, no nothing. Uh, this takes place completely after the events of season uh, one. Literally, uh, moments into it. We learn that something happened to Krausch and uh, Rem. Uh, so they get attacked by the um, Sin Archbishops of, uh, I think it was Greed. So they get attacked by um, the Sin Archbishops of Greed and Gluttony, uh, to be respectfully. And, oh man. Um, so the, the Sin Archbishop of Gluttony has this power where, like... He can eat someone's, like, memories and names. Um, so if he eats your memories, you're just stuck with your name and, like, you don't know anything about you. Like, you, uh, you don't even remember, uh, you don't remember faces, you don't remember your past, you don't remember your childhood. Just, you just know your name and that's it. Uh, but if he eats both your name and your memories, you're, like, left in, like, a husk of just yourself. Of, of just a, just a husk of a person like you don't have a name you don't have memories uh you're just in a you're like in a state of limbo i guess uh and sleep basically and like you just um can't really like do anything for yourself and that's what happened to rem so so yeah so the basically the whole plot driven idea for this season is to just try to get rem's memories back so they Bro, they go back to the mansion, uh, where we learn that Ram, uh, was having a hard time with it all, if I recall, and she ends up going to the sanctuary with Roswell, and, uh, that's where we learn about Frederica. Frederica! Hey, I think, you know what, I think Pop smokes it the best. Shoddy a little baddie. She my little boo thing? I don't know, man. I, I, okay, just, just, I'm just gonna throw, I'm just throwing photos out. But I, I'm just saying, okay? I'm not, not a furry. But, Frederica tells them about the uh, whole history with um, the sanctuary, where that's where Rem and uh, Roswald are, um, how to get there, and so... Otto leads them there, and um, that's when, uh, shoot, the necklace that Frederica gave Amelia um, starts to activate and go off. 
Subaru goes to chuck it, but is teleported away to an ancient ruin. And while while he was teleported, he saw a pink-haired uh, little lolly. Yeah. Um, so, on his way through the to uh, temple, he gets teleported, bro. And, like, we get to meet um, uh, Echidina, okay? The, the actual witch of... Uh, I think uh, the Witch of Envy, I believe. Give me a sec. My bad. The Witch of Greed. So her whole shtick is that she um, she wants it all for herself type thing. Um, we learn, okay, like uh, later on in the story, like she made a proposal to Subaru um, that uh, if he just sold um, a fraction of like uh, his memories, uh, feelings, uh, I guess, like, in a way, in slavery to her, um, it'd be, like, an equal trade. He, he'd he gain knowledge and the power to be able to do that, um, but then also she would be able to harness the power of his um, return by death. So, uh, I mean, that's just how she is. That's just the type of person she is. She isn't a bad... I don't... Okay, I wouldn't say Echidina is a bad person. I would just say... Uh, like, I guess in the way that Subaru says, it's not someone that he would agree with. And I think it's just, uh, crazy. Um, it gets crazy. Like, we meet all the, the witches, like, all the actual, like, um, uh, it's actually, like, uh, the Seven Deadly Sins. Like, all the, like, uh, greed, gluttony, lust, all that stuff. We actually meet all the witches. Um, and, bro, we actually meet Statella, like the witch of, um, oh, shoot. Anyway, I don't remember, I don't remember which witch she is, but Statella is like, um, the whole reason that Subaru got isekai into this world and freaking was given his return by death power. And Emilia is the daughter of Statella. So even if she de she's been denying it that whole time, but she knows already, and we're just learning right now. I'm just learning right now Emilia's backstory. So I'm gonna get to learn a little bit of how Emilia knows she's a daughter, um, but she just doesn't acknowledge it and tell anyone in like the present world. Cause her whole thing is like she's really from like four thousand four hundred years ago, but she got frozen in ice, so she didn't really age. Um, no, she didn't really age, so when she got unfrozen 400 years later, um, she was, um, she was technically probably, like, over 400 years old, but, um, really she's just, like, a 16-year-old. Anyway, it's, it's crazy, um, back to the sanctuary, though, uh, uh, we learn early on, like, with the sanctuary, um, Echidina, uh, made, like, a seal around this um around the sanctuary um so mixed blood races like elves um and then like a uh, half beast which was like uh Frederica, and then we soon learn later garfield uh who is stubborn but he's he's, a, he's an actual genuine uh caring person when he gets down to it um they um they are entrapped in there and only they are able to um, free sanctuary itself. Um, Frederica is an exception because she was born, um, from a different father. So she didn't have, um, half, she wasn't half blood. She was a quarter blood. So she could, <laughs> God, so <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, oh geez. Um, so yeah, she was a quarter mixed blood and she was able to escape sanctuary, um, and we kind of, I guess we kind of later on learn why uh, that, but it's not important because this whole setup is that Emilia needs to, wants to free everyone from Sanctuary and get them back to their family. But we learn that when Subaru goes back to the mansion, Lisa, or Elsa actually, my bad, is there. And just murders everyone. Yeah. 
So Elsa just murders everyone in the mansion. So Subaru is in like this dilemma where he has to try to save pe everyone in the mansion. Um, Frederica, um, shoot, this little girl. It's like a fa It's like, uh, Subaru's like a like a big brother to her. Petra, I think that's her name. I'm gonna call her that. Um, she gets uh, hired there under Frederica, and they're helping. Freaking, and then Rem's unconscious body is there, as well as um, Beatrice, who also we learn is actually a spirit, just like Puck. Um, and she was entrapped in that um, library from Echidina. So, um, I don't know. See, like, Echidina's really an interesting character. Um, but anyway, he has to save people in the mansion, but he also needs to help save what's going on here at the sanctuary. He needs to liberate it. So he's in this dilemma. Uh, and every time he, uh, he um, returns by death, he has to go about it a different way. Like, one time, um, he just straight out tells what happened in um, the trials to get out to free sanctuary, to free the sanctuary, uh, and that hurts Amelia, and that devolves into a, a whole thing, and then another one is he gets tied up and captured because he smells like the witch, um, and then, oh, jeez, it all accumulates into this thing, or, it, no, it just all accumulates down, uh, to getting Roswald's help. And Subaru tries to confront Roswald and all that crap. Um, it's Roswald that's been planning this all along. Like, he hired the assassins to the mansion. He... He has been doing this to... It's been implied, right? That Roswald... Has been manipulating every situation Subaru has gone through just to strengthen his will because he's been following uh, this gospel book. I think it's like the um, the book, it's like a, it's like the book of future, like it tells the future of that person. So Roswald's been following that to the diehard extreme. In one scene, he betrays Ram and kills Garfield. Both of them in front of Subaru. Because it wasn't in accordance to the, to the book. Like, he is a diehard devote to it. And then freaking... Oh my god. Roswald, such a sketchy dude. Like, I felt really sketchy about him in season one. But my god. Season two just hammered down on it. This dude is a lunatic. Like, he's absolutely insane, and he's trying to have Subaru uh, turn into him, and Subaru doesn't want that at all. Um, I think a really cool concept that the show is trying to portray is uh, that the witches from before um, all had, like, um, a, a twisted mind to them. Um, but now I think they're wanting to... I think now the new age of the witches are trying to have a better... Uh, look at things like uh, Subaru he and uh, since he killed um, Beetle uh, Beetlejuice um, he inherited the the sloth uh, the the greed of uh, cheeses I can't speak the sin of sloth um, and even recently in, a, in an episode we saw um, thanks to Echidina uh, I guess and helping it um, Beetlejuice's power, where it was the, the unforeseen hands, like, no one can see him, only the user. Freaking, he manifested one, and was able to fight against, uh, uh, against Garfield. So, it's, it was implied throughout this story that, um, Subaru is, like, the apostle of greed. Um, and then we just recently learned that Emilia is the daughter of Statella. And freaking this whole time she's been hiding it. So I don't know what's going on, what to expect. Uh, I need to just 
the thing the thing with re zero and one thing that i really love um is its plot twist and the amount of information it gives you um like story like story building wise um a lot of this is building off of season one two and also in its own right so to really for me to for me at least to really understand the story and understand um the complexities of what's going on um, i've only seen like two recap videos so far of part one and i just barely caught up the part two right now so to, for me to understand the complexities i need to let that information soak with me for a bit and to be able to um understand it more and uh it's just crazy um, just how many things played off of each other this season and just the the amount of information we were given like the and even the twist too like figuring out like you can't even trust people that you thought you could trust at times like it's it's completely crazy and it just it throws curveballs at you all the time that's why I love this series um this is actually getting bumped up like I think I'm bum I'm bumping up ReZero on my anime tier list because it is like an absolute favorite right now. Like I I want more content and I think uh, going forward from this review I'm gonna watch OVAs and whatnot of of ReZero and try to just I don't know get more content out of it. That's what I would like. But yeah, no, I think ReZero. Um, is a is is a m amazing modern way of of telling this fantasy story of being isekai. I love how it just defines the norms of being an isekai. Like I've watched Konosuba, um, it's stereotypical. Like, uh, what's it called? Um, Kazuma just gets e uh dies out of from a dramatic shot, gets teleported to this fantasy world, and has a harem of women all around him: Aqua, La Latina, Best Girl Megamine, and then freaking other side characters too. They he just is surrounded by so many women, and I I guess the same is here for Subaru, but it just takes a, like a plot twist on it. Like, it just defines the norm of what an isekai actually is. And that's why I love it a lot. I think that's why I um, I have, like, such high regards for ReZero. And that's why when I first watched it, um, it really just set me in awe, I guess, in a way. It just made me... Um, really fathom like that like this is an act like this this story has more complexities than meets the eye and i wanted to understand them and i'm just so thankful i gave this series a try and i loved season one i've been wanting to rewatch it with a friend um hopefully i can get to that um but i just wanna i just wanna uh, hopefully this uh, finish off this series um and see where it goes in the future i'm excited for that all righty I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, a few things, few things. We're going to go ahead um, and we're going to roll the next anime. But I'm going to explain some things afterwards. So let's go ahead and let's skip and let's go pick one. Alright, so. Let's go ahead and let's roll our next anime. Now, of course, there is some preferences I want. Um, there has been some anime that I've been wanting to get to. Um... Interesting enough, I've been wanting to actually try to watch Attack on Titan or something. Um, so, I don't know what we're going to pick, um, but we're going to hopefully see uh, what we uh, enjoy. So, let's go ahead and let's spin the wheel. Oh! Princess Connect Redive. Okay. Interesting. I've actually... <laughs> you know, okay, there's a funny story with this. Um, I saw this... Uh, on crunchy rules instagram <laughs> and i was just like you know what i'm gonna add this to my plan to watch uh just for that reason alone because it just seemed like a very interesting uh comedy exactly so i'm uh i'm excited to see that i hopefully um i'll enjoy it but yeah anyway um <laughs> that's exciting all right i'm excited for that i'm excited to watch it it's been on my plan to watch for a bit so uh we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go back uh to the video so let's all righty so i want to explain some things 
we are gonna watch the said anime that I just drew. But I want to take a little break from this series. Um, not because I, I'm done with the series. It's more of I just need like a little bit of a personal break. Um, I think when I think I'm gonna realize something when I do this series is when it comes to like big shows or like intense drama type shows i guess you could say like for with like with three zero i'm gonna need to just take a little bit of like a break after them um to just let my heart rest i guess you could say and also my mind rest on this on the subject matter um if it was like um if it was something like jojo or like nekopata that i reviewed and um it was just like uh a comfort type thing like with Konosuba, like that's I see that as like a comfort anime. Uh, you can give your thoughts on it. You don't gotta go too deep on it. It doesn't have a lot of complexities. But when it comes to something like uh, Re Zero, it's so complex. Like you just gotta let your mind rest on the information for a while, uh, so it's not keeping you up and you know feeling restless. And uh, it's something I experienced when I finished Darling in the Franks for the first time. Um, I just couldn't like emotionally bring myself to do a lot of stuff because it was post anime depression uh basically so yeah i want to go ahead and give myself a little bit of a break uh i won't be gone for too long um but hopefully you guys didn't like this little uh switch up of the format uh no script i certainly enjoyed it i actually thought it was pretty fun i you know like i didn't get this touch on every subject or every topic um, that went on in detail, but I mean that's why there's videos uh, directly for that. I'm just I'm just making content of giving my ideas or my thoughts and what I liked about the show um, to you guys for entertainment, and that's hopefully that's hopefully what's been going on. Um, so I yeah I didn't want to turn the series into uh, a big old review, like a uh, an anime, re like it is a review, but not in like the the stereo sense where I go through detail, the detail, the detail. What happened episode one? What happened episode two, three? And actually, that's what I was gonna do before I before I uh, scrapped the whole script idea. I was want to try to go in through episode through episode, but no, I just didn't want to do that. I wanted the, I want I'm gonna keep it scriptless from now on, and I'm just gonna. Um, try just expressing how i feel about said show um after i'm done watching it so uh yeah i think that's all that's got to be said for that um i hope you guys have enjoyed the video um be sure to like or dislike down below and let me know um anything helps me grow as a content creator uh, and hopefully um going forward we can uh enjoy the next anime that we're watching i hope you guys have enjoyed till next time stay sexy All right, all right, all right, all right. I know, I know. I just said we're gonna be watching uh, Redive Princess Connect, and I do, I do. But my friend, my good friend Nora, she wanted me to watch Attack on Titan if she would get to watch Re Zero. So I'm gonna when we get when I get back from my break, I'm gonna watch Attack on Titan. Um, and then the next anime after that will be uh, Princess Connect Redive, okay? That's what I'm promising. I'm, I'm sorry that I uh, it had to get a little complicated there. I just this literally just happened right after I got done uh, shooting all this um, for the episode. So uh, anyway, official goodbye now. Sayonara.